Welcome back. To Bronze League Heroes! Oh, wow. Okay. We have a Terran versus Zerg on Year Zero. Two challengers will enter, one will leave. I just described how 1v1 works in, like, every game ever. But without further ado, let me introduce you to your heroes. In the top left, it is... I, 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 or, or I, or um, one, two, Septa I. It is, it is I. I don't. We, we will. It'll be a continual struggle. Or in the in the uh, inimitable words of Tasteless, uh, Taryn. If if you just forget who it is, or you're you're. Takes more than a second, just Terran. It's Terran. Anyways, in the top right, it's our Cuban. All right. The races don't all look alike to me. I can tell the difference. I've played thousands of games, but have these players? I'm not sure. It's a drone scout right off the bat, but I... Nope, that's going to be a struggle. We're going to go with I-7. Or 7-I. No, I like I-7. Everybody will just get confused. I'll probably put a clickbait title involving Intel. But speaking of intel, it's been denied. As uh, I-7 was able to get that hard wall very critical. So that way the drone scout doesn't get in. You can hide all that clear information. Like the fact you have no units. Our Cuban, what's he gonna do? Being denied that early. There is a wall. So, is it time to tech up? Is it time to expand? Uh, the overlords are making their way across. The secondary scout. And SCV will return. Well, they, he brings an offering of five minerals. Will our Cuban accept his offering? Or will he kill him in cold blood? The diplomacy, not always the strong suit of the Zerg. In fact, it has never really been any of their suits. But he accepts this gift. Oh, wait. Or does he? He just lets him... He lets him feel like he has a chance. And then he... Oh, that was cold. He lets him live for a few extra seconds. He pulls back, and then he comes and finishes him off. He let him see what life would taste like after getting all that information. And then he took it away from him. Mark Cuban. No mercy. It's going to be a roach one. Not a bad choice in general. Especially, I don't, he hasn't really seen anything in I-7's base. Besides a barracks and a wall, but the map is dark and full of Terrans. You never know what it could be. You gotta get that Roach Warren. Got more Queens on the way. Queen's always a good choice. Mainling Nest, whatever, I, it's more like a tech bush right now, or a tech shrubbery. But he's getting everything he can at this uh, hatch tech level. I-7 on the other hand. Looks like it's coming together. He's got the 111, the Destiny Cloud Fist build, if you would. I wouldn't, but if you would. Oh. One barracks, one starport, one factory. Not in that order. He, he's gonna do a little bit of ring around the add ons here, like he's reinstalling Chrome. And it's gonna be Cloak Banshee. Hellion Banshee, a classic tactic since the beginning of StarCraft 2. We've seen this since Wings of Liberty, and it's it's not a bad build today. It's very common. People have kind of a, a expanded into battle cruisers. If you watch Special and Ty and other Terrans who uh, appreciate Bronze League heroes, like Innovation, of course, you've seen how many nukes he has. That's where they get all their builds, 100%. But the Hellions come in. There are no units. Wait, the Queens come down. They will split. They will unsplit. They will resplit. They will block the way. The drones are in the corner. The micro is there. Things are getting pretty lit right now. No. Okay, some... D how he got six drones. The micro. Off the charts. Hundreds of actions per minute. As these players try to uh, defend and attack, of course. Yes, the, those are the options. They could defend. They could attack. Really covered it all. They could just do neither 
That's why I'm here for. That's why. That's why uh, I get paid the dirty esports money to really bring such hard-hitting commentary and analysis. What do we have next? A Hydra's den. So here's the question. He has planted the tech garden, but will he harvest its fruit? Oh, what a block. Because so far, he's built three, four tech buildings, but all he's built is queens out of them. So no no roaches, no hydras, no mainlings. As, as a queen connoisseur myself, I do approve. But I feel like maybe a few roaches wouldn't hurt. I'm not here to criticize. I'm, I'm here for the comment. Oh, he's going to hide the banshees. The overlord sneaking in. Overlords, very sneaky creatures, known for their stealth capabilities. They move so slowly, you might not actually be able to see them. He goes and worships the Super Crystal, the Mega Dark Pylon in the corner, that should give you some sort of buff or just blow you out of the sky, but instead it just looks really cool and drops your FPS if the game goes on too long. Oh, one Marine will drive the Overlord away. The Banshees, I believe, were spotted. Amon. Amon should... He should be able to take a chunk out of your units like this is the, the campaign. He just looks very angrily and passive-aggressively. He's like pretty much all of Twitch chat at all times. The Overlord now worshipping the pylon. Now, Hydras were built. Thor's of course on the way. Why wouldn't there be a Thor follow up here? The Banshees are in the main. Using some nice micro to keep himself out of spore crawler range. Now, without detection, there is no overseer here. Our Cuban. He, he sprays within detection range of the spore crawler. The Queens. Oh, I, I can't. Did you bring your glasses, Brenda? Nope. Uh, not the glasses. You gotta bring the overseer. But. But did you bring your glasses? You can't be forgetting them. No, don't worry about that. All right. Oh, who put that s'more over there? I said leave it in the mineral mine. Go. Oh, oh my God. And the banshees just kind of slide around. Yes, there. See? Look. Look. They're right there. That energy runs out as well. Groove spawns is done. One Banshee survives, but uh, just barely. Now, the damage has already been done. That Banshee has eight kills. Will be gunned down. 24 drone kills thus far for I-7. But our Cuban does have three bases with which to replenish them. I forgot, I forgot to do a shout out earlier, but thank you to uh, Prepare to Crab for looking through the replay pack on Discord. Um, replay packs come out every periodically when you guys send in amazing and mostly not amazing, but every once in a while amazing replays to winterreplays at gmail.com. Um, but since I can't go through five to 30 replays a day myself, uh, I crowdsource it and I wanna give a shout out to Prepare to Crab. Now, if at the end of this, this game sucks and is boring, though it, it seems to be shaping up pretty well. You can blame him as well for wasting your time. But I don't think Prepare to Crab would do that. I hear he's a raver. And you know, we're in, uh, okay, everybody, go warm up your pizza rolls. And also make sure when you're warming up those pizza rolls, wet paper towel, even, even a moist paper towel over the top of all of them. You're, you don't like biting into, like, you don't want a song of ice and fire on those pizza, pizza rolls where you have three pizza rolls that will, will melt through uh, uh, steel beams. But then you have one pizza roll which is made out of uh, dry ice. Wet paper towel. Pro tip. Or just spread them out. Come on. You don't need 30. You could do 22. Anyways. They're Hellions. There's also, I mean, this is the classic. The shells coming together. He's got high sec auto tracking for turret and planetary range. The TPM, the turrets per minute beginning to grow. Also, 
who are they kidding when they say the serving size on pizza rolls? It's, no, it's only 100 calories per serving. Serving size, 1.3 pizza rolls. <laughs> Control yourself. Why do you put them in packs of 60? Who knows? <laughs> Nidus Network. Now, it's not... It, he he does have... Our Cuban has vision. He sees there's a planetary in tanks. Oh, the Viking. The, the Overlord, all its prayers to the Super Pylon. I believe it's slightly out of vision range, so it's, uh, it's buffering. The Pylon is buffering. All right, just pause. Pause it. Pa okay, pause. Good job. Okay, unpause. Didn't fix it. Shit. Okay. Mm -mm. Nidus not work. Now, the thing is, there is no obligation just to go put on my angry coaching top hat. There is no obligation for a four-base Zerg player to try to attack into a two-base Terran with tanks and a planetary. But... With that in mind, it is almost certain that our Cuban will repeatedly attack into a two-base Terran with tanks and a planetary. The first Nidus is at the natural. That was optimism at its finest. Now, my question is like, he saw the planetary in the tank. He knew that was there before. He decided to do it anyway. So that's, I feel like that's going to set the tone for this game. Oh, very dead creep tumor. I-7, moonlights as an oncologist. A Viking in very dangerous ways. I. It's gotta be pretty intense out there. If this was Star Trek, they'd be. Somehow you're going like light speed, but it's okay. It's just, bu it's just a little bumpy. It'll be fine. Just ignore the laws of physics. If, if you got the time, which at this point, there's so many turrets, go check out. Star Trek stabilized video for all the points when they are uh, in for a bumpy ride for a fun watch. Oh, but look at this one two strike. The Viking comes in from the north, the Banshees from the south. The multi pronged attack beautifully executed. The Viking goes down, but it drags a hundred supply of Roach Hydra, and that might be enough to take out the base. Are there overseers? Brando, where did you put them? No, no, it. Did you? Oh, there they are! But not in time. He gets it. What a snipe! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. But our Cuban, in, a, in an endless rage, will now attack directly across the map. And I-7 is going to... Oh, that could be a disaster! He's unseaging all the tanks at the worst possible time! All the tanks are sieging. What upgrades does he have? Plus two, plus one. There are just so many tanks! That's a lot of tanks! There's the Thor buffering. Unfortunately, this was the worst time to move down the ramp. There still might be enough widow mines. The splash damage more devastating than a tsunami. So much. He's bringing everything. All the tanks are down for the count. Our Cuban just muscling his way through. The planetary, the backstop he needed. A devastating loss for I-7. But... A planetary holds the line. He knew what he was in for. The Hellion counterattack. Will he be able to drag all oh, the Roach Hydra? Everybody, we're, we're there and back again. A uh, Brick Zerg story. Oh, the Queen's, what? Well, right there. You need to be on top of that. There's not that many drones. I-7 has a lot of money in the bank. And uh, Roach Hydra, the Roach Hydra army has gone all the way back to the third. And the pressure is laid off I-7, which is good because he's only building tanks out of two of his factories. Slow and steady wins the race. Possibly the most uh, apt description. Well, it's starting to become a turtle versus hare situation. 
as the literal turtle Terran here is is producing two te uh, looks like we're gonna go for a bio switch five barracks I'm not sure he knows you're allowed to build more than three factories maybe maybe there's zoning regulations or something but an interesting call going into marine well stim plus one infantry weapons a bold move by i7 we'll see if it uh we'll see if it pans out for him Our Cuban, on the other hand, has put his army together. It is 84 to 33 army supply, but the uh, Terran army is up a ramp with Widow Mines and a planetary and incredible upgrades. Whereas the Roach Hydra has plus two attack and nothing else besides a lot of anger. Nidus Network coming in. The scream will be heard throughout the map no matter where it is. Let's go to the I-7 cam. Does he panic? Does he look around the base? He... No, oh, yep, I'm on his camera. Add yep, on. yep this is his camera. Okay. He doesn't seem to care. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> oh, oh, we lost him. He had zero APM for a sec. He's back, though. Mm -hmm. The production tab is a stark contrast, but... Remember, we are 16 minutes in, and he's upgrading stim and combat shields. He doesn't even have- he has one marine. The hero marine. And not the German wunder kid. It- it's the one guy really making sure that pylon doesn't- doesn't stop buffering. Because the animation only renders if a unit is in vision range. So, unfortunately, this is not Big Game Hunters, a big design flaw in StarCraft, but he will mine out. I-7 will mine out eventually. There are Vipers on the way. Our Cuban, for maybe the first time in his StarCraft career, is staring down the barrel of maxing out. There are multiple Nidases. Nidases? Nidases. It's just Nidases. Not hard. The Vipers are consuming. Reckless consumption is a real concern, but he's okay for now. What is it? He scans. It's far too dangerous to risk any of your units when you could just scan. I-7 has done not a terrible job of putting together. He's like, those tanks, the Thors, they weren't doing it for me. I'm switching to bio uh, without a care in the world. Hmm. So the Vipers, Blinding Cloud could be huge. Blinding Cloud could be huge. Unfortunately, the Vipers all died horribly. It's a massacre. Oh my God. Oh, those are plus three tanks. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I've ever seen that much blood. Oh, he's got the bloodlust. He's on the chase. Without the tanks, the bio army not gonna be that great. Uh, is he gonna try to fight it heads up? I don't know about this. He might learn a valuable lesson here, though, and that's the real victory. Okay, yeah. Well, it'd be nice of him to even things out here. So... You know, our Cuban's like, okay, I went up that ramp. <sighs> it was tough. Like, I wasn't able to get the Vipers. I wasn't really able to get the damage done I needed. You know what unit will really make the difference? You know what unit's probably going to solve my problems? Banelings. Baneling speed is on the way. I'm sure. Uh, what could go wrong? He's getting more overseers as well, reminiscing about the Banshees and the Banshees. Oh my god. Oh, this is a gamble gamble. He's got to slide right by Iman's face. Hope, ask for his blessing. Iman rejects his blessing, and so he will be denied. Nope, wait. Okay, he rephrases. 
Amon says, all right, move along. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, our Cuban is having a lot of Nidus connection issues. You're having Nidus connectivity issues. Please try checking your, your Nidus worm and try again. Okay. Oh, he actually does successfully bring the army back. And he should have enough to clean this. One of the most effective Nidus worms I've seen at less at at less than Grandmaster level of play. He that was a complete success with the Nidus. He, he I don't know if he saw this. He doesn't have anything at the watchtower. The Nidus worm does not count as a unit, even though it is an absolute unit. Am I right? Like, we don't mind. What a location. And then he decides, you know what? You gotta get, you gotta stretch your legs. The medevacs are back. Kind of, uh, in the autumn colors of shame. Now, who knows if he uses health bars? He scans, he sees the army. Some incredible foresight here. Will three widow mines be able to stop the entirety of the Zerg army? A spawning pool rebuilt on the other side of the hatch. The biggest brain. Our Cuban is coming in. Does he have what he needs? He's gonna try to come up the ramp. There's still a whole lot of tanks up there. Is it enough? The Hydras are getting in the way of the babes. The right click, he gets a couple tanks. Still a lot of tanks. Still a lot of tanks. Still very many tanks. Ooh. And I7 takes the supply lead. The tanks. 12 kills, 11 kills, 10 kills. And there are a few on the high ground as well. The unit's lost. I uh, favors I-7 by uh, a bit of a margin. But maybe next time, if he just has a few more roaches and mainlings, he can get up that ramp. All right, don't let your dreams be memes. Don't let the laws of physics or, or gravity or basic common sense keep you from accomplishing your goal. Whatever that goal might be. What is this? I, the overlords are on the move. Obviously, Amon has given his blessing to both sides. He kind of uh, is a bit of a, a bit of a player, if you would. The overlords are coming in. They're not dropper lords. Uh, I'm not sure what the plan is here. But they're chilling. I mean, there's an option for a Nidus. The, the main and the natural are 100% completely mined out. So I7 says it is time to move to my third base. <laughs> he brings all of his... 40 SCVs. There's a Nidus in the corner. I-7. Does he see it? Let's go to the I-7 action cam. Yep. Oh. 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 No. No. Not there. Oh. 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 What is that? Oh. Yeah, he just... Wait, wait, wait. Does he just abandon ship? He, the orbital's on the way out. He's, oh, it's a base door. I'm just going for it. We're base traded. Okay, so, and the tanks are just gonna chill in no man's land right now. Literally, there's no, well, there's a couple marines. The buildings will buy some time. The bio army is stimming across the map. This is it. This is the big play. The main base being absolutely gutted. There's going to be no Terran production. Don't worry, he doesn't have that much income. The roaches are coming down and immediately gunned now. The bio army has two one upgrades. That's pretty good. The roaches and hydras are still working their way. The planetary on both sides. It can turn its big, strong face around. It just can't point it up. So it can actually defend his own rep. Oh, he gets the Nidus! The Nidus! He got it! Oh, they can't go home. Though they could go back into the network to one of the other Nidus worms. So we're in kind of a weird scenario. He's going straight for the mainling nest. The, the planetary fortress is taken out. He, he gets through. It's unclear. 
because he still has to go down a ramp in the tanks. Oh, the orbital! It didn't go far enough! He's going to lose vision of the high ground in a moment, but the tech lab, the real MVP, the tech lab is giving vision. That tech lab saving the game. He's going to try to get back in the Nidus, but at what cost? The Terran army, he can't go through it. He can't come back home. He doesn't have a Nidus worm on his side of the map. <laughs> he can't go down the ramp. I-7 just cuts it off. Like, like he, he just amputated a limb, except he amputated every limb. He's like, I don't need my arm or my leg. All I need is the heart of a Terran and like a dozen Marines. The Widow Mines, the Planetary, there are still tanks on the low ground. Repair is there. Wait, what? There's a base here, 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 not all from the same side. Both sides adapting, but I think I-7 has, either he's been in this scenario before, or he's literally just very well suited. He's handling himself either intentionally or accidentally quite well. Now, six swarm hosts are on the way, not necessarily because they're a great choice, but because he lost all his other tech buildings. Brenda! I... Why are we still over here? They're ripping... Our hive is gone! We don't even have a spawning pool! What are we doing here? Have we made mistakes in our life? But now is not the time for regret. Oh, the swarm host dying horribly. The queens are gonna try to come back across the map, and the only way they actually can, there's some tanks. Oh, the locusts, though! Locusts are gonna help. I mean, not that much. But almost not at all. Because medevacs heal. The tanks, oh my god, the ultimate showdown! To decide everything! Tanks versus queens! But the queens! Run! Look! Right there! He's not paying attention! The, where are the transfuses? The queens, he tries to get a transfuse, it's not enough! No, you can't! They, they have, they have treads! I don't, oh, he's back on the creep! A single, wait, two queens survived. I don't, and what happened here? The army came back and cleaned up the bio army. <laughs> Somehow, our Cuban is ahead on supply. Oh, this one hero, Hydra, gets him out of heck! He boosts away! Two engineering bays, exactly what he needed. The locusts, while they can fly, they can't shoot air units, which seems like, you know, like a little bit of a design flaw. I-7 has no production facilities besides command centers and planetaries. The, the queens bought time with their lives. It's like our Cuban still has 32 drones, but he's literally got to start from the bottom. He's got a, his spawning pool is done at the 27 minute mark in 40 seconds. And uh, that's going to be his very first tech building. He lost everything else. But the locusts, the locusts are coming. He can use those swarm hosts. The wheel mine blown out of there. Command center taken out. A couple more locusts. Friendly fire, not so friendly. The swarm host usage is good. And he has almost nothing that actually deals with this. He has one marauder in, well, that's it. One marauder in five tanks and two medevacs. The, the Locusts, actually, I've, I-7 needs to reconsider, you know, having units. He's just gonna build turrets. All right, bada big, bada boom, I found the solution. 3,000 minerals and some turret. A little bit of vision. Oh, the tax, tax. Does he pop the Locusts? He does. The exchange continues. How many tanks will go down this time? It has to be at least one, right? Will they all drop on it? Yes. So it's just the one tank. There's also a hatch here, just in case. Yeah. But how many swarm, it's eight swarm hosts, four tanks. A barracks is rebuilding. The tech trees have been cut down on both sides and must be regrown. Both, both players taking kind of alternative routes to actually rebuilding the units they once had. And by that I mean... Zerglings and barracks, but... <laughs> oh, get out of here, tanks. I mean, Zerglings. I mean, both. The locusts respond. 
if each wave kills a tank, let me do the math, then it will take three. He's down to two tanks. Where are the boys going? Oh my God, the trail of tears. Unless it isn't, unless it isn't. He has two planetaries. I, it, it, instant replay. They don't have building armor, but they do have high sec auto tracking. And surprise, there's planetaries. Now we have some very important questions to ask. Infestation pit is on the way. He's going to lean on the swarm host. Our both sides have plenty of money. But it's just such a struggle to figure out how to spend it. A factory's on the way. Oh. Can one dream of battle cruisers? Every game. If a game goes long enough in Bronze League Heroes and there's a Terran, we get battle cruisers. <gasps> the repair. The repair! The repair! What no, wait, I take it all back. Or do I? This planetary getting real damage done. The backup planetary buffered for one wave of locusts. Our Cuban is still expanding. He's almost out of minerals on the, his bases that you would normally call his bases. <clears throat> oh, the, the planetary flank on the swarm house! The planetary will kill off one! Make that! Oh, not quite enough. The locusts are used, but in kind of no man's land. He's in between. He uses all of them at the same time. And that means the planetaries might have an opportunity to stop all this. Will he repair? The planetary's doing a pretty good job. Here comes the rest of the swarm a little disjointed. The planetary's holding the line! He must repair! Where are the boys? They must hold! This planetary 15 kills and counting. The, what? What? Why are they over here? The SCVs are attacking! The swarm hosts just have to watch! It... Ah, and then the road hydrant comes up! And that's just done. And the SCVs will be slaughtered, but I-7 still has 46 of them. There's another round of locusts. I-7. He's not mining with much, but he's mining with enough. He's gonna rebuild his starports on the low ground. The locusts drop. They're not microed in the range. The planetary, under fire, under attack, under assault, under barrage. The planetary falls. Oh, he missed it by a split second. He was too busy putting together five starports on the other side of the map. Now there's just one planetary between him and his opponent using basic critical thinking skills. But five starports and money in the bank. The swarm host usage is pretty top notch now that he's been focused. There it is! The fusion core! But is there time? Half the locusts need inspiration. The rest will be in the front. He needs to repair. If he doesn't repair this, that could be lights out. The repair is there. Some of the SCVs will be sacrificed. But it's a uh, acceptable losses as long as he holds the line. He's got the money. He just needs to hold. The planetary doing a great job. 44 kills and counting. 49, 51. Each shot from the cannons, killing most of the zerglings. The fusion core is nearly done. He's rebuilding supply depots on his completely dried up net. Where? What? Okay. Some locusts come in. Decide to take a, a bit of a tour. That doesn't do much. But another wave of locusts could be enough. He's building five battle cruisers, though. There is no stopping those. He can't stop five battle cruisers. He might have bought enough time. He has no more minerals. There are no more minerals for any more battle cruisers past this. The planetary falls. But our Cuban, what is the Zerg? He has two Hydras and two Queens. I'm not a math expert, but I don't think that's enough. In the Nidus, there are still a couple swarm. Why? He's rebuilding barracks in his main. That's a little optimistic. Will this planetary hold long enough to get the battle cruisers out? <gasps> the starports. He hasn't seen them. Our Cuban does not know that all the starports are just kind of chilling on the low ground. These tanks, 25 kills, 17 kills. The locusts are all going there. He might catch a glimpse. Doesn't look like it. He's still in the dark! The fleet is being called in! 
the planetary will hold for now. And guess what? And he has two two upgrades already. The battle cruisers have arrived. And suddenly, he has to tuck tail and run. The swarm hosts will trouble him no further. Yamato cannon nearly complete. Queens, nothing. There's no anti-air to stop this. He rebuilds a hydralis den. Our Cuban has enough money to make 50 corruptors. But he has to first be inspired. The battle cruisers slowly methodically, inexorably moving their way forward. If only they had some sort of warp drive that allowed them to come across the map. Unfortunately, the technology isn't there yet. I like how I-7 has more foresight than Maru, and he already has floated some barracks to the corner. You know, you don't want to take any chances. <laughs> the base will die. Unfortunately, the base with the Hydra was done at it. He's building 12 Hydras. The Hydras do have 3-2. He needs, he needs more tech. 15 Hydras building, but a lot of them under the laser batteries. I-7 is out of minerals. Our Cuban is not. He just needs to spend his money. He lost the Hydra den. He doesn't have any... Well, I guess investors are anti-air. Oh my god, is he gonna base trade? The battle cruisers are coming. Swarm host. If he pops the Locust... The Yamato cannons on Hydras? Is that even worth it? Oh, you can hear the screams of Swarm Host dying. But the Hydras are whittling down the HP of the cruisers. He's down to three. He jumps home. I-7. The supplies. Dead even. He builds nine more Swarm Hosts. Both... N neither side really with much in the way of income. I-7 has barely enough minerals to repair his battle cruisers. The locusts are coming in. Good thing there are enough starports that he doesn't need all of them. More battle cruisers are on the way. He's he's going for the tech labs. He'll get a starport if only they could fly. I-7 is almost out of mineral patches and minerals. The Hydra count is growing, but so the five battle cruisers are still tough to beat. It's going to take overwhelming seven Hydras. Not enough Hydras. Oh. Oh. Where are you going? And off into the sunset. Okay. Can't be too careful. Battle cruiser almost complete. At this base. Oh, he jumped. Wait. What? He jumps to the other side. The final gambit. He goes on the Yamato. The volley blasts through the hatch. The hatch is down. The roaches and hydras come back. The swarm hosts go forward. There are already tanks there. And a battle cruiser just barely finished. I-7, the ultimate gamble. Will it pay off? The reinforcing battle cruiser comes in. He's grinding through the Hydras, but the Hydras pick off one. The battle cruiser count. He can't, he doesn't really even have money to repair or rebuild. These battle cruisers are everything. Our Cuban still throwing units at him. He's building a spire now. Another Yamato, he's going, uh, maybe, okay. He's gonna make sure he gets rid of the spawning pool. The same time, Locust. Locusts, the, the locusts get distracted, and then they get undistracted. It might be enough to take out the tanks. Not that there's much mining here, but it's a little bit less on his mind. The final tanks fall that survived so long. A spire is on the way. Where is the spire being built? In the bottom right corner. There are buildings all around the map. I-7 has prepared. There's a hydra den over here. Our Cupid seems to have finally learned his lesson. He has the money. He just needs to finish the spire. It's 20 seconds out or so. Corruptor's a much more useful unit against the battle cruiser. I don't know without upgrades, but Corruptor's could definitely help in this fight. The Swarm Host, not so much. The Swarm Host need to find focus. Then, though, at this point, the Swarm Hosts are kind of a big nothing burger. All right. Oh, he jumps home. There, I-7 is not mining. But, I mean, our Cuban isn't mining much either. Both of them 
These are their final cards to play. They have built their units. There are swarm hosts. They can kill the last buildings and any hope of rebuilding. The last minerals will be drained in repairing the cruisers. The board is set. The final battle. I honestly, 14 hydras with 3-2 against 5 2-2 two -two battle cruisers and a handful of corruptors in the mix. It, it really depends. Are there turrets? Is there any? No, there's no repair. There will be no more repair. There are no minerals left with which to repair these battle cruisers. The Yamato's come down. The boys are pulled. Oh my god, the boys actually could be a serious part of this. In fact, he's just gonna try to mine. Maybe he mines enough to repair three corruptors being built at this base. Some valuable money being spent. But here it goes. He's coming down. Are the Yamato's there? He uses the locust. I mean, they'll kill the- they'll kill- Oh, he jumps! He's gonna go for it! He has not rebuilt his base that is being revealed! Technically, at this point, it's an elimination race. He's decided he can't... There's no money on either side. 25 minerals. He's very, very, very slowly building up the minerals. The Corruptors have no upgrades. So that means that while they're okay against the battle cruisers, they're not great. Yamato cannons, offline. Yeah, okay, he has one, it looks like. Gets a Corruptor. Good shot so far. Does he have enough to kill these Corruptors? He's targeting down the battle cruisers, but the battle cruisers are targeting down the Corruptors in turn. Where are the Hydras? A few Hydras are coming up. That might be enough to turn the tides. He's using a Yamato. He doesn't have tactical jump. No, he's targeting the swarm host. No! It's a disaster! You had a dream! But that dream is dead. Our Cuban wins the final battle. 52 drones, 115 zerglings, 124 hydralists, a dozen overlords, 7 overseers, 95 roaches, 13 banelings, 9 corruptors, 20 swarm hosts, 2 vipers, 8 queens, 10 extractors, a single creep tumor, 3 spores, a roach warren, baneling nest, 4 nidus worms, a nidus network, 2 infestation pits, 2 hydralis den, 3 spawning pools, evo chamber, hive, lair, and 5 hatcheries, totaling 39,000 minerals and 13,225 gas. Sure, not as cost efficient. I-7, losing a lot across the board, not as impressive in sheer number but he just didn't have the resources. He couldn't, a couple more battle cruisers, maybe uh, a couple more tanks, but he couldn't quite hold the line. Hopefully I-7 can uh, process that loss and come back stronger. Thank you to prepare to crab. <laughs> Are we prepared now? Are you not prepared? For, for, bring, for judging this replay worthy. I don't know which player sent it in, but I have my guesses. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this battle. And it was a battle. Uh, if you do, make sure to, uh, of course, leave a kappa in the chat or the comments to like and subscribe so we can, we can feed Jimmy and we don't have to fire him. And we can continue to bring you all the heroes that you want to see and mostly those that you don't. Uh, I hope, well, you can find on almost any channel the best of the best. But uh, hopefully you enjoy the best of the worst. Thank you.